uh, he will explain a little bit more about himself and do an introduction about himself. Well, thank you, Brianna, and thank you, uh, Trevor. I see you online as well for the opportunity to come back. I've been looking forward to this. Um, and I have a weird background, so I, I'll give you the Coles notes. Um, actually, I had worked in the um, healthcare sector for around 11 years, and I made a pretty big change myself. Um, I transitioned into working professionally in politics and then uh, with the federal government for an MP before I left the office and oh, way back in June of 2017 to try to do this for a living. And so it's a bit of a gamble and a risk, but it seems to have worked out. Um, I'm certainly enjoying it. Now, um, I have a, uh, I, the reason I'm able to speak to this to the degree I do, um, one of the things that I do and I've been doing for a long time is I teach and educate about uh, prevention of online exploitation, uh, human trafficking, online safety. And uh, I took an Ontario Police College program in a discipline called open source intelligence, social media intelligence. So it's called OSINT or SOSINT. So that's the skills I use to be successful in politics. It's the skills I use to learn how to teach families and children and teens how to be safe online because it gave me the skills of an investigator and all sorts of tech tools that I was able to use to design those programs in ways that really hadn't been done. Um, now what I did was I repurposed those skills for us today. So I've begun teaching for the Human Resource Professionals Association. I teach, guess what? Social media, internet, background checks or investigations so they can, they can screen potential new hires. Um, I teach you now job search skills and networking skills, again, using the same things for job seekers. So the skills I'm gonna show you today on how to monitor your brand, build it, protect it, if need be, repair it or, or you know, rejig it. They come from an informed perspective, a professional um, framework, as well as tools that go beyond the scope of what the average user would try to use. Uh, I will preface and say though, the tools I'm gonna show you today are all free. Uh, very few, if any, even require an installation. They are user-friendly and easy to use. And some of what you're gonna learn is using tools that are already familiar to you. I'm just gonna show you better, more efficient ways. Before I move on, I am gonna say as well, with, uh, with the COVID era, <clears throat> I know we've heard enough about COVID, but the whole online, um, we're remote working, we're remote learning now, um, obviously more than ever, but people are using the internet more and more. It's even more a part of our lives. So it's that much more important that the image, the brand, or what I might refer to as a footprint, uh, reflect in a positive way on your business. Um, if HR people are looking at people online before they hire them, then we need to be aware as well that potential clients or customers are doing the same thing with us and our businesses online. Do I want to stay there for the night? What have people said about it? Is it clean? How is the service? What do other people say? And um, it, that's becoming just more important. We have to be aware of it. One thing you might find, you might find you have the footprint you want. Perfect. You might find it's not as big as you would like. That's okay. There's ways to fix that. You, you might find it's not exactly what you had in mind. Again, I'll show you how to transition it to align with what you want. We might also find that um, our footprints tie in with somebody else. That can happen if we have a common name of our business or our, you know, our person. So all those things could be fixed. So let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. And, uh, here we go, sorry. All right. <clears throat> all right. So we're gonna begin by looking at, we're gonna show you a few examples of what can happen, like why this matters and what can happen if our, if our image uh, becomes compromised. I'm gonna show you how to be, build the framework in a simple, practical way for building that image you, you desire. If you need to repair it, I'll show you some simple, practical ways to do so. Um, we'll talk uh, briefly as well about social media and review platforms, as well as how to respond in a, a positive, productive way. If it's internet trolls or it's a, a fair but negative review, we'll look at that in turn. I'm gonna show you how to monitor your brand in other words, uh, I'm going to show you how to set up some alerts and things as well as do some searches that you can use to monitor what's out there and what's being said about you online and on social media. And <clears throat> toward the end, I'm going to show you a few, again, practical things that we can do to protect our online image and identity. 
they, they're a lot of work to build. They take time. Uh, what I find is they are fragile though. They can break easily. They're hard to fix. So if we go through the trouble of building our footprint out um, to promote ourselves in our business, to me, it makes sense to wrap up at the end with how we can protect it, for example, for being hacked and having someone make inflammatory posts under our name or our business. Um, so we'll look at that toward the conclusion. A couple of examples that, we could, that can speak to us all though. In this particular case, there were 10 students that had applied to and were accepted at Harvard University. So their dream came true. I think we can all agree that's a lot of work to get into Harvard, a lot of many years of making good decisions, working hard, studying, volunteering, extracurriculars, networking, and all of it was gone in an instant for these poor kids because of offensive Facebook memes. And so uh, at the highest levels, uh, including Harvard, um, and this isn't that new, this is a few years ago they were doing this then. And I don't wanna see something bad like that happen to one of our businesses we've worked hard to build. No one's about the law. James Gunn is one of the most po uh, powerful men in Hollywood, director of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. And he was fired uh, from uh, directing part three after 10, 11 year old tweets surfaced that were offensive. And after about a year of hard lobbying, a lot of people came to support him. He was reinstated, but damage was done. Now, I can't stress this enough. Whenever we're online, we have to assume we're public and anything that we say, even if it's a direct message, a text, if it's on a device that has any potential for um, online connectivity, we need to treat it like, would I be comfortable with that being on the six o'clock news or on the front page of the Bellevue Intelligencer? Um, so even in this case here, uh, what happened? I'm sorry, one sec, I'm just letting somebody in. So in this case here, uh, a group of hockey players were exchanging private, well, private messages on Instagram. One of the players had a weak password on his Instagram account and it got hacked. And the person that hacked it took screenshots, sent it to the players threatening to expose them, and they did send them to the media and it became the frontline news story for quite some time. So what ended up happening was this young lady here, it was a positive body influencer in Winnipeg. And they were saying, I'm not gonna repeat them, but these are, this is a post she did with some of the stuff that we were saying about her. It was really, it was really hurtful, misogynistic, wasn't good. So she went out and posted this. And then what had ended up happening, everybody paid a price, nobody won. Um, the, uh, the one player was an NHL player with the Washington Capitals. He was released within 24 hours. That player's brother played for uh, hockey for the University of Manitoba's university varsity team. He was let go from the team. And the other person played uh, AHL, I believe, hockey. It was like pro hockey. Uh, and he too was released. And as far as I know, none of them have been re-signed. And in this, this coach here is rather, uh, this is rather insightful, but he says, um, what happens now will stay at these athletes forever. You're gonna Google their names and this is what you're gonna see for the rest of their lives. And not only will it impact their hockey career, but other careers they may wish to pursue. Now, okay, that's a hockey player. We're, we're entrepreneurs and small business people. That point transcends and if the same thing happened here and I owned a B&B, &B, and I was a part of that and saying those nasty things. And people look up me and they look up my B&B. &B, this is the stuff they're going to see. And that's going to put a lot of potential customers off. So that could have been avoided. Like, let's be nice for one. That wasn't really the right thing to do to say those mean things. But um, again, if it's, it, if it's on Instagram through Messenger or Facebook or even your text client, the potential is always going to be there that could be public. And what we want to do is look at ourselves as a brand. There is the Google mat. That's who you see today. There's the private mat and I have all sides, sorts of sides of me that I don't showcase online. I stick to my, my brand when I'm online and I never say anything I wouldn't be comfortable with my grandmother hearing or being on the news. I just wanna show you that this stuff works too. Um, this case here, I, um, I worked with Abigail's Learning Center and I, I offered and created a certificate program to teach uh, young ladies how to use technology, social media and the internet to create a better future. And uh, a big theme in that is using social media to showcase our best and brightest colors, our kindness, our character, our special skills, our value proposition in your case, what makes me different than them. Look at this great picture of the sunset, look at this meal, you know, tagging customers to come out, thanks for coming. This is showing your best foot forward, well, footprint, best foot forward, pardon the pun. Now in this case though, if you observe, down here, you could see a lot of positive comments from many different people. 
So they noticed this and it got me onto the radars. New people started following me. People were sharing this, which led to more people. My audience grew a fair bit from this one simple post. It started to build my footprint. And in this one here, I did a, uh, this was the graduation, I believe, where I had counselors and uh, uh, politicians and dignitaries come out and celebrate these young ladies that completed the program. And again, it led to all sorts of wonderful vibes. It made me feel good. I made a difference. People really liked it. The young ladies got a lot out of it. Actually, Brianne, I would remember, actually, I brought these young ladies to the Bridges to Better Business event. Uh, I, I helped them network. They watched me speak. And then I took them out. I remember uh, John Cairns treated them kindly to lunch at Roland Angelo's after. Uh, it was a wonderful day. And it worked because I got this email like half an hour after that post, I believe, uh, from a local um, youth center wanting to hire me to come in and do some cohorts of my start program. So I built business with my social media by having the brand and the image and putting things out there that attracted their attention. Now, possible to change your image, you bet it is. Um, what I did, when I looked at myself from 2010, let's say, to 2015, 16, I didn't really have a big footprint. I wasn't really using social media then. I, didn't, I wasn't in the media, the mainstream media like I am now. Um, so there wasn't much. And then when I search now, as you're going to see, uh, the things that come up about me are uh, online safety, uh, prevention of human trafficking. Uh, the online image thing comes up a lot, the human resource professionals, the small business center and chamber. All those things come up now, and, and that's what I want people to see because that's now who I am. My, my, my uh, professorship at Loyalist comes up quite a bit. Um, but prior to 2017, my footprint was my role with the government. So I represent the MP at events. I'd help cut a ribbon. I would present certificates, give remarks on behalf of the government. And there was a lot of that out there because the media covers those business openings. So I was popping up or you know gallows and events um, quite a bit. But now you won't find that without really digging her because I have changed my image to go from being a government employee or a civil servant to being Matt, educator on technology and positive online image and, and those things. So I have transitioned my own footprint. Pause for a minute here and it's a simple exercise. I, I'll tell you what I did. Um, I literally was sitting watching television and I thought, okay, before I really get out there, what are the things I want to be known for? So I thought, okay, well, definitely online safety, prevention of human trafficking, I'm passionate about that. I wanna be known about uh, help showing people how to build a positive online image, how to uh, network and build a, a better career path. Um, I wanna be known for um, teaching HR and um, other professionals how to screen and background people. So what I did was I really thought in my mind, what are those things? So I came up with a list, a short one, and what I more or less do is I keep my posts or things I share are, uh, in sync with my brand. So I, I'm a fan of the Maple Leafs, okay, don't laugh. <laughs> but I'm a, I am a fan of sport, I like the Toronto Blue Jays, but um, I don't share things about the Jays or the Leafs. I don't share humor very much, and it's not because I don't enjoy humor or my sports teams. It's because it has nothing to do with what I'm known for, and it confuses my audience. Uh, it, it, and yes, we have an option here, and I'll, I'll put it out there, I get this all the time. There's no problem at all. In, in fact, I know many people, they have a private Facebook account, and they use a weird name so it's harder to find and they have only family and close trusted friends in that and that's where they share their fun side so in my case I, i'm matt richardson on facebook you look me up I, i'm easy to find um but and that matt richardson is the google matt and if you look me if you look me up you will find me and you will find the stuff that i post and i share all aligns with my brand if i wanted to have a personal family one i don't um i might use my two middle names like william joseph or Joseph Richardson, something like that, uh, where people that are, are professional contacts but don't know me really well wouldn't know how to find that. And I keep, so what I do is I keep that one locked right down, super duper private. And I'm still careful about what I say and share, but I, do, I keep it closed. Where my personal or my pri uh, public one, the Google Mat, I open the privacy wide open. And there's an important box in there. I'm gonna show you shortly an example you have an option to allow social media, your social media posts and, and activity to, uh, for Google and Yahoo and Bing and search engines to return results on them. So if I Googled Matt's bed and breakfast and I had the option open that Google can return my Facebook and LinkedIn and my Instagram, Twitter, whatever, 
when I Google it, I will see the Facebook and LinkedIn and tweets and all that stuff. So it makes my footprint larger and really easy to find. And that's the stuff I want my clients or customers to be able to find. And it's a really easy way. So here's one quick tactic. It's easy. Uh, it's just Google, which you already know. I'm going to show you just quickly here. Down in the bottom, you'll see you've got settings. There's a little link here. And if you click it, you're going to click advanced search. And I'll show you an example here. And when I do that, now, uh, the example I'm going to show you here is how I look at my footprint before 2017, because there's so much out there about me. I might want to see, okay, Matt's obviously been doing that and sharing a lot about it, but was, what was he about before then? Here's one way you can do that. You'll get into here, and it's just as simple as this. I just put Matt Richardson in Belleville. I will shortly explain these quotes in this and. There is meaning to that, but that's coming up, so don't worry about that for now. And then, yeah, I can change it to English, Canada, et cetera. And then when I do, I'll get a search. And then what, what you'll see is you'll see this bar up here. If you don't see it right away, there's a little link here. It says tools. Click it, and then it'll say um, anytime. And see here. And I go down to custom range. And I go over and I set my search for Matt from 2010 to 2017. So I don't see anything after uh, I left the government. And when I do the search, lo and behold, all of this stuff is my government of Canada mad. Habitat for Humanity opening. This was a funding announcement at Loyalist. This was an Elevate Plus graduation cohort. Um, this is a, a, an opening of a, a pet food store. There's nothing about the new mean at all before 2017, because I built all that after my footprint after this. Okay, pause for a minute. I know I can't, I wish we were in class together. I missed the classroom, but I, I will put this out there. If you're anything like me and you set out to do internet research, to look anything up, I don't know about you, but I'm prone to what uh, we call rabbit holes. So if I sit down and I'm looking up uh, how to deal with internet trolls for small business preparing for today's workshop, <laughs> and I don't stay focused, um, I literally can find myself within 15 minutes listening to Marvin Gaye and looking up Cajun shrimp recipes. <laughs> so um, it's not uncommon if you're in that boat. Um, so so the, here's the thing is, there's, I'm gonna give you a simple framework that works. I teach this to my students now too, because they always laugh and go, we all got a rabbit hole story. So let's stay on the rabbit holes. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Now I'm showing you this by the way. This is great for any research you do at all. It might be ideas for your business. In the context we're looking at today, I'm showing you how to look up your footprint as it stands today. You're gonna to audit your footprint. Is it there? Is it too small? Is it unfavorable, favorable? Is it completely different than what I want? I'm gonna show you how that's done. That's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna define some keywords. Then I'm gonna show you how to do a surface scan using some pretty neat tech. I'm going to show you how to update and refine your search criteria if you need to, because it might change a little bit after you do that step. Then I'm going to show you how to do your deeper dive into Google. And then I'm going to show you how to do a social media search. So let's start here. I'm showing you keywords for me. I use myself, by the way, as an example, because I'm an easy one. Um, I'll be making the slide deck available in a PDF after, and this is all there if you want to practice on me. Um, I use myself because I'm an easy one to learn from. And once you get the hang of doing this with me, start putting your name in, your business's name, business name in the town that you're in. Uh, we'll look at all that. In my case, keywords for me, my name, again, internet safety, human trafficking, Belleville, Quinty, HRPA, Loyalist, a couple other clients here that I might be known for doing work for. Those are the, and what I'm doing literally, if it's pen and paper or it's in a Word document or a PowerPoint slide, I'm putting them down into a list. I'm just put them down on a little list because these are the keywords I'm going to start with. Then I'm going to cook up three or four easy searches to begin. This helps me stay on track. If I end up with 12 of these, I end up way spread too thin in the rabbit holes. I keep it to three or four really good solid search strings. So I might start with Matt Richardson. Again, I'm going to explain these ands and quotes shortly. Just hang with me. But I will do Matt Richardson, Belleville, or Quinny, just as you see there or I might try Kingston, or my name with Loyalist. I go, okay, there's my three searches I'm gonna start with. Let's see what I get. Now I'll explain those quickly. 
when I use the quotes, so that top search, this is just a, a, a bit of what we call Google hacking, or uh, if you're a bit geeky like me, Boolean search. It's a simple concept, but it will change the way you search online. If I search Matt Richardson Internet Safety exactly as you see there, I get almost six and a half million hits. And that's way too much. Most of that has nothing to do with me. I am not that famous. And I know that. But when I introduce the quotes, what it's saying now is it, up here, it's just Matt. It could be Matt or Richardson or Internet or Safety, 6.5 million. If I put the quotes around Matt and the quotes around Internet Safety, it means it must be Matt Richardson. And this capital and means it must also include Internet Safety. And when I do that, I go down to 104,000 from 6.5 million. And as I begin to layer in my search strings here, you'll literally be able to copy and paste these off the PDF and change my name to yours and your business name super easy. But you could see as I go along and I add the quotes, the ands, the ors, I refine the, the, the towns I live in, um, I can get it to, from 6.5 million down to 169. And that, those 169 hits are me, like most of them like by far. Quick note, um, there is a comedian named Matt Richardson, and he has a pretty big footprint. So he jumps into my footprint search, which I don't want. So if I just simply put the word minus comedian, or if it's Matt's B&B, &B, and there's another one, I'm in, let's say I'm in Quinney West, but there's another one in Pembroke. If I put minus Pembroke, that one comes out too. When I put minus comedian, the comedian comes out of my searches. And I went from 231 to 169 right there. Now, when you do that, the, why is that so good? You're not going to have to look through as much what I call noise to get to what you're trying to find, which is your or your business's footprint or image. Because this takes all of the irrelevant um, stuff right out for you. This is a manageable search now. So back up just for a minute. This is my best advice is make your keywords. That's actually more than I usually use. I might pick three or four keywords. Three or f then I go from there and do three or four search strings. And then I copy them and paste them into a Google. And you'll see here, my results will be right down to this nice manageable level. And that's, that's what I do. Uh, one more, if I bump into a link that I wanna check out or it's cool, like I've actually found stuff about me that I had no idea was out there and I didn't wanna have to find it again or forget. I actually just, um, just like I do here, I copy and paste any of those interesting links in so I can go back to them and look at them. And in some cases I've shared them on my profiles. Uh, I just didn't know they were out there. Uh, okay, so what we've learned so far, I'm just gonna do, when I do this periodically, it's just so that we, uh, we stay on track because um, I'm hitting with a lot of information and I'm, I'm sensitive to that, but I'm, um, it's practical stuff. Um, let me just take you through here. Really what I've done here is I've shown you a very simple, almost, it's almost too easy, but it truly to goodness works. Let's start with some keywords. Uh, and one more thing, you might find your business has been known by two, uh, two names. Maybe it was, it was called something else, be, else before you've uh, renamed it. Or maybe it has a nickname or a slang term. Or maybe there's an event that seems to be tied to that business. Maybe it's hosted each year. That's what I mean when I say keywords. Anything you think. Uh, your business, current name, prior name, nicknames, uh, events, activities that it's affiliated with. If there's a, a per, if there's a prominent individual that's uh, affiliated with your your business, you might want them in there too. So if I'm a winery and I have a, a couple of clients that are pretty high profile, I might be looking for Matt's wine and the celebrity name. What comes up? So I'll create your keywords. A few search strings here. So there's my keyword list. There's my search strings. The next slide might be any links that I want to park and, and come back to. Using these ands or ors, it's really easy. You want, you can play, you're going to want to play with them a little bit, but it won't take you very long. And like I said, you can copy and paste my strings right from here into the, uh, the search, um, search bar and start there and just change my name to yours, internet safety to your business. If I said Belleville, but you're from Picton, put Picton. Give it a go. <clears throat> I'll pause there, Brianna. I'm just gonna give everyone a second if we have any questions to that point. And if not, cool. We, oh, I'm, I've, I've, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, we will take a break at the um, end of the sort of first part. We'll take a 10 minute breather, check phones, stretch your legs, and when we come back, we'll, we'll wrap it up and conclude. So we will we'll be getting to a break before too long. Okay. 
Okay. This is called search engine optimization. The jury's uh, out on how effective it is. Some say it is, some isn't, or some say it's just as good as the uh, firm that's doing it. Um, I, I don't speak so much to that, or it's called SEO, but this is a very light version. And these are concepts that I do believe work. As simple as like my, this is a snippet from my website. I tend to use where I can, I don't force them in, but where it's relevant, it makes sense. I'll use words like expert, internet safety, cyber respect, positive online image right here. I'll even na put names of clients that I want people to know I've worked with, like CFB Trenton, uh, Mohawks Bay Quinney, loyalist, on and on. I use terms like subject matter expert, media, so that when people search for me, these names come up, or if people are searching for Matt with positive online image, my website will be in those hits. So I do the same thing in my social media posts as well. And I mean, it works here. Um, you can see the bolded words, online safety, Belleville Intelligence or article on me, Quinty, internet safety, online safety, Belleville, um, internet safety. There's one on human trafficking. It's all in there. And that's my straight up Google result. That's me searching in Google. And it's finding those words that I want to be found for. I want to be known for those things. So again, if I go back to the, to the winery or the b and I might want to be known for my back on the wire, maybe a specific addition, maybe a food pairing. Um, again, maybe there's a particular proponent um, that loves your wine and, and posts about it. Think up here about what words encompass what you want your brand to be and just begin, again, strategically weaving them into posts and, and onto your website. If you do a blog, same idea. It just makes it more what I call discoverable, easier to find. Quick one on images. This is just so easy, uh, honestly. Uh, if you've taken an image with your phone, you know, it'll, it'll, if you just save it as it is, it'll just be like, you know, uh, JP, JPG 1052, something random and uh, nonsense, right? It's worth taking a minute, save the photo, back it up on your phone, but name it things that you want the image to be known for. So in my case, photo, you can see here, plus showing, plus safety, plus expert. So I use the word expert a lot. Um, photo, you can use either the dashes or the pluses. Photo showing internet safety guru. Internet safety expert, Matt Richardson. And when I do that with my images, and the same when you put them on social media, you've probably seen you can do the tag. I put the same thing in there if I have the option to do it. So the files name that and then the tag. And when I do that, these images, when I search them, all come right up. It wasn't like this uh, a little a while ago. The moment I started to consistently use the same words and tag them, it truly worked. A friend of mine taught me that trick. She's an actress, and she has a she's done very well uh, building her brand. And she said it changed. It was a game changer. It's easy and it works. Now up, up here, this one this one's a little bit older, but you can see up here the things I'm known for at that point. And look how far down the election is. That was all I was ever known for up till 2017. That was it. That was my online identity. That was all I was known for. And now it's pushed to the point if I do it now, it's not even up here anymore. So that my, my point there is, is if I have unfavorable reviews or my brand isn't what I want it to be, you can fix it. It just takes time and consistency. There is proof right there. I'm not embarrassed of my government service. I'm proud of it, but I don't want to be known for anymore because I don't want to go back to that. And in time, as I built my footprint, using this techniques I'm showing you, I've pushed the old mat all the way down. It's still there, but it's harder to find, and I have to look for it a fair bit harder now. And that's just an example showing you, um, I mentioned earlier, with my uh, um, social media profiles. I have ticked the box to allow search engines to return results. And you can see my LinkedIn, my Facebook, um, tw Twitter, all that. These images are all from my social media. So that's one of the easiest ways to start to build your footprint because if you allow it to return the results and you're being smart with your keywords and you're staying true to your brand and someone does a simple Google and a lot of people, that's about as far as they're gonna go. They're gonna Google you. Some will go to TripAdvisor, sure. Some will look on social media to see what's being commented and said and all that. But we have to, we have to know that uh, even if people do those things, they're still going to be going to a Google search. So this is an important one. And it's easy. It's just using social media and how to use it. You already have it. 
just enable that um, search engine to be able to turn results. It makes it far easier for people to find those great things about you. Okay, I'm gonna show you a tool in a minute. Brianna, you might remember this. I put Brianna on the spot in February with this one. I'm gonna show you this. This is actually an intelligence, uh, like a, a, a serious intelligence tool. It's used uh, primarily, I used it for investigative purposes. I've repurposed it for general research and again, things that we're doing today, the online footprint. What you're looking at is a visual of my online footprint or identity in a pie chart. Everything the internet knows about me is here. I, I always point out this, look at this, Matt Richardson is an expert. Remember how I said I use expert in the photos and expert in my language? It's work because when my results come back, it's one of the top things, expertise. So it works. Um, you can see here, Safety Village, Internet Safety for Parents, Seminars, Bell, oh, Belleville Chamber, right here. What this does, number one, it, you fire your name in there, your business name and your town, your keywords. Remember, I showed you how to do the keywords in the search. You put, you put that in there, and you, I'm gonna show you the link in a minute. In fact, I'll let you, I'm gonna demonstrate it and let those that want to try it quickly. Um, but you put, that, you put yourself in there, you're gonna know pretty quickly what your footprint is. So you're wondering, am I known for the right things? Do I have a positive image? Do I have too small of one? You can save a lot of time and energy going here first before Google, and you'll get the truth. Now what this does too is Google, even, you saw mine, even with a really strong, well-constructed search, I still had 169 hits. This takes those 169 and boils it down to about 20, 25, because what it does, is it groups into categories, um, results that are the same or in the same theme. So you don't have to go through pages of Google to see the same Matt Richardson teaching at the Safety Village six times. You'll just see it grouped here in Safety Village. And if I wanna click on any of these to look at the actual articles, too easy. This one here is actually uh, Brianna. So I did Brianna's footprint with her permission. And Brianna, um, I see here, she's known for office and events coordinator, that's her role, helping people write grants or find the money. That's not a bad thing to be known for. I think that makes you pretty popular. Uh, we've got Belleville and Business Center in here, uh, running down here, there's uh, stuff about her um, uh, and doing the horse shows. So th this, and then there's something here working with Luke. This is a positive image, um, well-built. And I know I'd think favorable things if I were looking Brianna up. Athletic, really cool special interests, expertise, grant writing, wonderful. And that's the way I want your businesses to be seen as well. Are you, uh, are you a winery that serves uh, great food? Are you known for having the best vintages? Are you known for having great food and service and helping people with their pairings and uh, lovely sunsets and all those great things? This will help you tell you what is being thought and said. And this is it. I'm going to jump off here for a minute and I'll demo it. And then I'm going to pause for questions. Oops, sorry. Actually, Brianna, if you want, would you mind throwing the link out to them, uh, everybody through the chat? Oh, maybe I can. So it's carrot2.org, carrot2.org, and you'll come, you'll find, you'll land here. Now, if you'd like to try, you can, or if you just like to follow along with me, I'll do a demo. I'm just going to pick on me because I'm easy. All right. Let's try a general one. Matt Richardson and Belleville. You land here. Now that's a funny one, dance instructor. I'm actually not a dance instructor. I was going to be doing Dancing with the Stars pre-COVID, um, and I have also taught at dance studios um, and talent agencies, so that's probably what that relates to. Open source intelligence, project playbook, digital empowerment, safety build. So you see this here? 41 results. And if I'm looking at my own footprint, I can, I, I can look in here so much easier and see without going through pages and actually having to manually open stuff. I click on the Belleville Chamber of Commerce and here's the links to all those um, pieces about me. I can just click on them and open them. 
And here's my Get Online Smart Lunch and Learn. This also will show you the stuff you might not have found otherwise if it's buried too deep. Because this pulls everything up to the top, puts it at a sort of a surface scan, a bird's eye view. And if I click the pie chart, that's how I got the pie chart. And then again, I go through here and I just start looking at the links. And if I open something that's interesting and I want to go back to that, oh, I didn't even realize that was here. Okay, so I'm going to take that link, copy it and throw it in that Word document and go back to it so I can, get, I can finish my research. That's what I like to do. So let's just do a quick wrap up of what we just talked about in that section. I hope this is helping. I find with me it does when I'm learning a lot, just to do a quick roll up. Um, we talked about, we did our, our um, search results and strengths. We've talked about strategic use of keywords that make sense for your brand, your image, and using them in anything we publish online on social media. And I'm, I'm just showing my example there for my website. And here's some of the hits I get. It, tra it translates into good results. Um, the images and naming them and tagging them. Again, just using sensible keywords. And it does bring my images up to the top. Um, oh, yep, making our social media discoverable on search engines. And that will, ver that will be the quickest way, by the way, if you don't have much of a footprint or your business is new or you're, you're, re you're redoing the image you want. It doesn't take that long on the social media part if you're posting regularly, but making it discoverable um, through search engines. Um, it, it goes probably quicker than you would think. It will get there. And there's just some of the stuff that uh, comes up through my social. So that's not mainstream media or websites. That's why all my social media there. The clustering technology, make this your friend, uh, carrot2.org. Uh, anytime I use this, I show it and I, there's so many uses for it. Um, it's a pretty fun tool. Actually, it's pretty fun at parties. I've had fun throwing people's names and with silly words and you sometimes be surprised what people find they have a lot of fun with it in practicality terms it's made my life easier I spend less time doing research and more time uh, working on the core uh, task at hand or enjoying myself this saves so much time very importantly this may reveal things about you that you didn't even know were out there because it brings everything up to the surface and makes it easier to find okay. uh, one more thing on that that will very quickly also reveal anything that you don't like. And if you did see posts on there that you didn't really want up anymore, or an old blog you wrote that you didn't care for, or may now not look so good, you'll quickly learn what's out there, and then you're just going to go and delete that stuff. It's still technically out there once it's there, it's there forever. But by deleting it, it's much harder to find, and people have to be pretty motivated. So if you take it down from your profiles, technically it's still, it still can be found, but it's unlikely to be. And, and if you're pushing good new stuff over top of the old stuff, that pushes everything down anyway, like you saw with mine, the election, got pushed all the way to the point where it's now off of my top search results. Okay. And any questions on the, on the clustering tech or anything else so far? Okay, um, okay. here's a cool one too. I wanna to show you this before we go on our break, which we'll do shortly. Everything I've been showing you so far is how to do an assessment or an audit of your footprint, what's there, what isn't, how big, how small, anything I need to fix or worry about, anything I like that I want to share and promote more. Um, one, so that's how you do it using clustering tech. That's the carrot search engine, which I just, just showed you the pie chart, as well as uh, strategic keywords and search strings for Google and Bing, like traditional search engines. The third way I'll show you is just, and I still do the manual checks, but the third way I'm gonna show you is uh, set up uh, Gmail alerts. And if you go to gmail.com slash alerts, you'll get to this sort of screen here. And I use this in the government office because I used it to monitor the name of my MP. The office address, things like that, is more of a threat assessment thing. Do we have anything that I need to be aware of, wary of, worried about? Um, and what happens in this case here, I, my example is online safety, internet safety. And what I do is once a week, I set up the option. I get one email once a week 
and I get this nice little format, it looks like Google News, where I get the title and I get a quick little summary of what it's about. And I'll get 20 or 30 emails, sometimes 10 or 12, but I don't open them all, I'll scroll through and I'll choose one or two that look particularly interesting and read it. And if you were to put your name, your business name, your city, you can actually have more than one alert if you, if you wish. You can actually have Google automatically um, search the internet and send you this once a week in, in the form of an alert that your business popped up I, I know on Thursday in this review or on this website or in this media article. You know, TripAdvisor here. Oh, okay, I got, oh, I should answer them. That's not a great review. I'm gonna be quick and get back to them. This is one more tool, it's free. And if you have a Gmail account, it, it's a why not do it. And see the cool thing is the search is already showing you how to do. You just put the same things more or less right in here and you're gonna hit save and done. And you'll get that once a week, gives you a little bit more peace of mind. Um, and again, I still do the carrot search, I still do the Google, but I let this go to work for me. So once a week I just get an email and I have a quick look. Is there anything, nope, or yep, I'll look at it. All right, let's pause there. Um, when we come back, we're gonna look at uh, some of the platforms and I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, techniques as well that will help you with your social media research. And then we're gonna to begin to progress into more of the protecting your brand and image as we close today. Before, I, uh, before we take our break, are there any questions we wanna address now? And if not, uh, we will leave some time at the end for uh, questions we didn't get to uh, during the session. If not, I'm just gonna do a time check between the 10.46. Do we wanna come back at 10.55? We can check our phones, check our emails, stretch our legs. We'll come back at uh, five to 11 and we'll, we'll finish up. That's good. Um, I just wanna let everyone know if you think of questions during the break, just, um, just pop them in uh, the Zoom chat there and uh, we'll get back to them if you somehow remember or you can think of some questions between now and then. All right, we'll see you guys soon. My goal is to show you what's achievable and what can be done, um, empower you with some of the tips, but then you're going to you're going to get the resource to practice. And uh, so if you don't quite remember everything and all those things, it's OK, because we've got your back on that. And of course, at the end, I'm going to provide my contact info. If anyone has any questions, uh, you're trying to say something's not working or you forgot a step, uh, you're free. You're more than welcome. And I invite you to contact me anytime. I'll just do a time check. Okay, and we're ready to go back on. Um, 
I'm just going to mute us. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we'll be uh, the recording. So I'm just going to mute us for now. But if we have questions, you can send them to Brianna through the chat or um, unmute yourself to ask it and then just remute when we're done. But I'm just going to mute you for now. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so we've learned a lot today, my friends. Um, in the next bit here, uh, we're going to show you a little bit more in terms of um, I'm going to show you how to uh, use one of my tools for a social media search. I'm going to talk at this point here about these different platforms. So we know we have our review platforms, TripAdvisor, Yelp, CAA. Um, really, there's only so much we could say about these. You, you do want to have a presence on there. And obviously, the more reviews, the better, the more weight they carry. And obviously, we want great scores. Um, so again, doing some of the things that we've been doing prior to this will help spread awareness of your of your um, your business and and uh, attach to it a positive image in, in public opinion. Uh, these sites here are just another forum for people to look you up. We want to treat it uh, much the same as if uh, we get a comment on social media. I'll talk about that more in a minute, but I will we will go through responding to positive and unpositive comments, as well as the uh, ever feared internet trolls. I'm gonna show you a, a really cool tool. Okay, I'm gonna give you a scenario. If I'm in the, I'm gonna pick the county. Uh, if I'm in the county and I'm a winery or a B&B &B or a popular uh, eatery or, in, or a combination of those things, um, I might be interested in seeing what people said during a big event I hosted. An open house, uh, maybe I hosted a special dinner, Fireside Lobsters. Maybe I just want to look at what people said throughout the summer of 2020. Um, now, you can manually do that and if you've tried to do that in Facebook, you probably find, for example, it's a lot of work. And I still do manually look at things in Facebook. I don't skip the manual step. But where I can, I like to have tools that help me find things I may not have found. And I'm going to give you one. Again, this is a this is an open source social intelligence tool. It's a real cool one. It's just a website. Again, this is in the PDF, so you're going to be able to click the link and bounce right to it. I'm not going to do it right now, but I'm going to show you an example of what you get. So this is who posted what, and this is specific to Facebook. And you'll see this here, it's free. It's not a download or an install, it's just a website. It says donate here, it's a button where you can donate, you don't have to. Down here is where you see your search criteria. I'm gonna point out here, that's just the link. So if I look myself up on Facebook, I'll get a link to my profile and you can see this unique, this makes my Matt Richardson a unique one. And if I paste that into here, and I click the find button, I get my user ID number. That's like the license plate, or the, no, no, that's like the vehicle identification or VIN number in your car. I can change my plate number, but I can never change the vehicle identification number. So if I change my name from Matt Richardson on Facebook to William Joseph, this stays the same, this here. So that means I can always find who and what I'm looking for. And all you do is put the link in here, find, and it'll give you the identification number. And that's helpful if I'm searching, uh, that works for pages, businesses, and users. Um, for, I'll give you one example that's very relevant was there was a troll, and it was, they were trolling a pizzeria. Um, lots of nasty comments that pertain to an outdated gift certificate or something fairly petty. Um, and when the, you looked up that person, the profile didn't lead anywhere because they were cl clearly being a troll. They're changing their name. But when you fire in that, it linked, and what we learned was the same person was trolling other businesses. So the, the basically what that told them was not to give this too much credibility or weight. This was a person that had a clear history and track record of doing it. And then the comment they posted was, they didn't out the user, but they said, we have found that this person has attacked at least six other small businesses. What they're purporting is not true nor fair, da, 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 da but they were able to substantiate the fact that they weren't being treated fairly. And that's a very good thing to be able to do. <clears throat> More on the trolls momentarily. The specific day, I can search by a day. Again, that's my big event. That's my grand opening. That's my 
uh, barbecue by the beach day with, uh, for my, my restaurant. Um, it could be a month or it could be by even a year. So you can search your Matt's B&B, &B, uh, Brianna's Winery, uh, whatever it is, uh, Bob's Fishing Excursions. It doesn't, they're variables. Our business, we can search by day, by month, or by year. And I can pick the, here in this case, the example I'm going to show you was I put myself in HRPA, Human Resource Professionals, and I picked 2019. So that's when I first started teaching for them. And when my result, this is cool. Now, wait a minute, what did I get? Well, I knew I had posted about teaching at their Eastern Ontario Conference. But what I didn't know as I was scrolling through here was that I had uh, people that attended that seminar that hadn't thought to tag me, so I didn't know, but they posted amazing comments and reviews about my social media investigations course. So I went through here and I found these, some very nice comments and actually I messaged them, I added them as friends and I messaged them, thanks for connecting. Do you mind if I copy and paste that and put it in as a testimonial? Sure. I said, hey, going forward, you can feel free to tag me anytime. Or I went and shared it. Hey, here's a blast from the past. Six months ago, I taught at the Eastern Conference. Here's what one attendee had to say. Thanks, Brianna. Great meeting you. So I was using that to further purport the fact of credibility, build my image, my brand. And I wouldn't have found it without this, because what this did, it found all posts with my name as a keyword, see the quotes again in the end, and HRPA. So it didn't, I didn't have to be tagged to find it because it treated my name as a keyword and it had to be me, like Matt Richardson, and it had to say HRPA. And boom, I found about a dozen. And I didn't know about most of them. So that's one, <clears throat> backing up for a minute, that's one there. Again, it's a website. Nothing to download, nothing to pay, nothing to install. And uh, bookmark that, play with it and have some fun. And uh, you just may find lots of great things that you can use. Again, testimonials, share it on your page. Um, or if there's things being said that aren't true or aren't kind or slandering your business or not good for business, you'll at least have the opportunity to, uh, number one, knowing is power, but number two, depending, if it's not a troll and it was legitimate criticism, you might reach out to that person and say, I just noticed this and can you call, my name's Matt, I'd be happy to make this right. Da, 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 da. It allows you to have the opportunity to address it and do the damage control. And missing it, not responding is worse than anything if it's a legitimate criticism. So there you go. Uh, yeah, there's just another example there with uh, the ICT seats and they're one of my clients. And again, I just picked, uh, I picked a year, 2019, and I got all this great stuff. Okay. Very briefly on social media, this is a real 101. Um, you may or may not know, but the dem knowing the demographics of the platform is, is a great thing and it does make a big difference. Uh, I'll give you an example. Instagram, it tells you the number of users. They're all pretty busy, but it tells you the ages. It tells you um, other personal characteristics of the users. So what this tells you is you want to be designing your content a bit differently for each. Like my Facebook post, uh, I'll give you, here's how I do it. Um, great day teaching with the Small Business Center, Trenvale Business Development Corporation, the Tourism Board. Um, tagging each of them so they see it like it, maybe they share it and I get members of their audience over into my group. Great. Um, but when I do it in Facebook, I upload my photos and stuff. I copy what I wrote, I post, and then I go into Instagram and I make it a bit shorter. And I might use different images because Instagram's a lighter, more of a, a little bit more of a fun um, platform, very visual. It's a bit of a younger demographic. So how I phrase things is gonna be a bit different than Facebook. Um, then I jump over in my LinkedIn and again, I paste it and I'll pick the most professional photo and I use my most professional proper language uh, because it's a professional site. But I'm, I, I don't, it doesn't take long to do that on those platforms because it's really a copy paste. You just need to edit it and you might use a different image or a different video depending on them. So if you don't know too much about it, there's a little bit in here. That's an easy one to look up, like demographics, uh, social media demographics and best times to post. Because again, people of 18 to 24 view their content differently than people that are 42 or 33. 
or are parents or are not parents. So those are, that's just a very quick overview, but my point being the, uh, the four I use myself are Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And I am just cognizant and make my content. I ever so slightly tweak it to make it the best it can be for that platform and the, the user demographic. That's just a quick look at the analytics. I'm not going to get deep into that. That's a different conversation. But this is my Facebook page. And if I go and I look, um, two-thirds of my fans are women. Now, it doesn't surprise me. A lot of what I teach, um, most of the time I'm dealing with um, mothers or school te female school teachers that are uh, concerned for the safety of their students and their children. So seeing here 35 to 44 is, is the biggest chunk of that, not surprising their parents. Um, but now this tells me a lot more about my audience, their age, their gender, a bit of their demographics, and I get a little bit about where they're from here. And that allows me to make my content that much more meaningful to the audience. You gotta know your audience, bring it to them. In um, an interesting point, Instagram, I used to not use it because I, I thought it was all 18 to 24. They weren't really my market, but importantly, the people that started using Instagram that were 18 years old a few years ago are now getting into their mid twenties. They're starting families. Uh, they have disposable income. They are a viable market now for me and for you. So I don't skip Instagram. Really easy, cool way. Here's a, a little thing about collaborations. Um, I'm using two examples here that you may be aware of. Bruno Mars at Super Bowl. So when he was assigned to do Super Bowl, people weren't excited, they were complaining. But Bruno Mars uh, won over a lot of fans with his show. It was one of the best ones, they said. And a lot of NFL fans that didn't like Bruno, myself included, actually, became huge Bruno Mars fans. And the NFL gained fans from Bruno's audience because they've watched because of Bruno. So both the NFL and Bruno Mars grew their audiences because of the collaboration. Likewise, down here with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Lady Gaga gained fans that were fans of Brad Cooper. Brad Cooper gained fans that were Gaga fans, didn't even know who he was. Now, well, what am I talking about this for? Okay, today when I'm done and I do my post, I thank Brianna and I, I, I thank the small business owner Trend Bell and, and all that good stuff. And I tag them in it. People that follow the business center or Trend Bell that don't know who I am, see that I've now become a part of their world and I get new followers and my audience gets bigger. And it, it works so well. Uh, Loyals College, I, I tag a lot of stuff with them because I do a lot with Loyals. They have like 26,000 followers. I don't, but every time I do it, I'm getting new followers and I'm finding my posts are getting more engagement and my image and my brand therefore grow and they grow and they grow just by collaborations. If I'm hosting, if I'm in a B&B and I'm hosting a lovely dinner and I'm using wines from one winery, catering from another spot, I'm going to do a post thanking them and tagging them, asking that they comment and share it in their feeds and we all grow our audiences that way. So that's how a collaboration works. That's like the Hollywood one. That's how we can do it. That's just an example there. I did this at the college, first day of class. I did the group selfie. I posted it, tagged loyalist, um, boom. And this one here, this specific one here, my coordinator emailed me and said she saw student reviews and she said something like, what a wonderful addition to the uh, faculty I am. So I didn't put her name, I, but I took the comment and I did a nice Loyalist College post tagging the school and thanking her for going out of her way to do that. I said, that's a pretty cool thing to do kind of thing. Great place to work at Loyalist, tag Loyalist. And I had, that's probably the most views I've had in the post, at least in a long time. I had almost 5,000 at that point, um, 72 reactions. And my footprint at Loyalist obviously grew a lot from that, which is what one of the things I want. I want more and more at Loyalist. And one second, I'm just gonna, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there, look what happened to my views on my LinkedIn when I did the post of Loyalist, a collaboration, okay? Look at that. So I was down in here, and that one post alone, I just spiked. One post, tagging the college, and I said the right things. I gave them gratitude and recognition and thanks. And you see here, I tagged the college and I used their hashtags. So if you look up the Loyalist College hashtags, there's all sorts of pictures of me with my students all throughout it. So people that are following the college on Loyalist and on Instagram, they're seeing me everywhere now and they're following me and they're liking my posts because I'm piggybacking on the college's audience. 
So if, if you're in Belleville and you're in business and you're taking the city of Belleville and you're using Belleville hashtags, I might not know about Matt's bicycle shop, but I know hashtag Belleville ON and I'm looking at that to see more about Belleville and then I see Matt, 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 Matt. Okay, maybe I should follow that page. Oh, that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll order something. I'll like his posts. I'll share some of them. But that's how it works um, and it's easy. And I, I've yet to have anybody complain about doing this as a practice. It's, it's, it's flattering, I think, for the most part. Never had anyone upset with me, though. So there's no etiquette, uh, no etiquette jeopardy there. I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit. Um, quick note, if you're doing blogs, these are a great way, too, if you're in, the, in an industry and you, um, you have the time to do a blog, even weekly. Uh, they do help build your footprint quite a bit, and they can help establish you as, as an expert or a destination or service of choice. Because blogs, you can share more than you can in a social media post. You can say more. So once again, I posted my blog I did with my class, tagging the college. There's those hashtags. And I just made sure that I included images in it. So you can see here, I've noted hashtags. Hashtags make it easier to find, and they put you in front of a lot more people. Um, backing up, one cool one they use a lot in Toronto, and I mentioned this with a, a couple of friends in the county, um, was beaching and whining is a hashtag that I, it's, old, it's used in more than Toronto and that, but there's a lot of people in the cities using that term, and it is a term that is closely associated with the county. So if I'm a winery, why am I not hashtagging beaching and whining? Hashtag uh, Sandbanks Beach. Tag the county, PEC County. Um, why, were, why aren't we all doing that? Try it. And that's just an example of, that's just me creating my post. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit because I've shown you most of this. Oh, okay, trolls. Um, I'll pause for a minute. Are there any questions? We just covered a bit, another nice little chunk there. Um, if, if there are, or if we're confused about anything, let me know. It, if you don't think of it today, cool, because I'm gonna give you my contact at the end, plus Brianna has my contact info. And if there are questions, um, I'm more than happy to help. Sorry. So trolls. I worked professionally in politics and I worked as a, what's called constituency manager for our member of parliament. So you might have gathered I have dealt with a lot of trolls. <laughs> it's politics, um, trolls live for it. So it gave me a lot of experience both during the campaign and in the office post campaign. Um, and what I've learned with them Never feed them. It sounds silly, but it's true. Even if you have the best comeback or a counter argument, the moment we acknowledge them, they win. That's all they want. There are better ways. If we have any Mad Men fans out there, the show, rather than jousting with these trolls, if you don't like the conversation, change it. So one really easy way that I used to do, and it works, I've had a few of them myself personally. Um, more, I dealt with a lot in the political sphere though. Um, but if somebody is trolling you, they say something nasty or mean, um, if it's really bad, like personal or it's vulgar, just delete it and block them. You don't owe anyone an explanation. You won't look bad for that. No one deserves to be talked to in a derogatory fashion. Um, in fact, on my social media um, accounts, uh, I would have, just like the newspapers do, or media outlets, rules of engagement, respectful and kind at all times. Um, we will not tolerate swearing, vulgarity, threats. Um, and if somebody um, comments or responds in such a way, you're well justified, uh, any of us are, in deleting and blocking them. You don't even have to respond. If they are saying things that don't warrant deleting and blocking that you do have to respond to or address. What I do is this, if they're trolls altogether, you can't argue or win with them that's what they want what i do is i message people in my network and i say to them don't respond to the troll but would you kindly add a positive comment to my post maybe tag a few other people who have a shared positive experience and get the conversation going so if you've got positive comments and you've got one or two trolls slipping in there simply ignore them and bury it with the good stuff when you don't answer them after enough time they'll quit and anybody who's looking will see, okay, there's two negative comments, but 12 or 20 positive ones. That's how you do it. And if you let them talk, they expose themselves for being what they are anyway. People can see through that. Um, also, the other reason we don't really want to get fighting with them, I say troll management 
isn't blunt force trauma boxing. It's more like jujitsu. It's a general persuasion thing. Disregard their comments. Don't get drawn in. Stay on the high road. The V's better. And let your network help you fix it. They'll do that organically on their own in many cases, and it's all, it doesn't hurt to message people that have had a good experience and ask them to contribute with a positive comment, tag people. And you can win that way without a direct confrontation. If you do, the other risk is if you confront them directly and you get in, drawn into the argument, they've got probably nothing to lose. And there are many stories of small businesses or um, business people that have been dragged down and into some serious stuff because a troll got into a vendetta kind of mode on them and, and destroyed them. A very real example was a realtor, um, it, was, it was somewhere in the US, and she commented on a media article, it was about politics. And another user said something to her, and she got into an argument, it was about politics, it wasn't personal. But the next day her realtor, her, real, her realty firm contacted her and said, uh, you gotta come into the office. It's like 6.30 in the morning. Someone had posted all over their website and the reviews and stuff that uh, she, had, she had slept with her husband during an open house. And it was completely untrue, it was a lie. It took three years, over $100,000 in legal fees. She finally found out who the troll was. And it was uh, somebody had no money or means to pay any type of libel damages or lawsuits. So she was out, her, her reputation was damaged. She had all that stress, which I could only even begin to imagine, and the financial loss. Um, and if she had avoided getting drawn into that argument with the troll, the troll never would have bothered to notice them, really. So it's just, it adds a risk. Um, so I, I myself don't do it. Um, back to the, the reviews. Uh, the, so again, I'm going back to my experience, but I, I believe there's a lot in common. Um, when I get a positive review, I'm pretty quick to respond or comment. I'm, po I'm very quick to acknowledge it and, and thank them for it. Um, if I get a negative one and it's true, or it could be, it's, it's viable and it's not nasty, again, I'm equally quick to respond. And I don't get into it on the thread, what happened and all that, but I'm pretty quick and I'll just say, hi, uh, Brianna, I'm so sorry that you had this experience. Uh, first, I've heard of it. But I was wondering, would you be able to call me at, this, or at my office? I would love to, I, I'd like to hear what happened. And I'd love to fix this and make it right. Contact me at your convenience. So don't ask questions about what happened. Who did that? And did, did, I don't know if that could have happened. Just do that offline, but respond quickly, politely. Um, always, be, always be kind, take the high road. Um, if in fact you did do any, or it was a bad experience, that gives you the opportunity to fix it. And often what I've seen is people go on and post a comment and say, well, after their discussion with Matt, uh, they did a great job, went above and beyond in fixing it. Everybody makes mistakes. I only looks good on you. you know, bad experience, you made it right, cool. If it's not true, the last thing you wanna do is apologize. The moment you apologize, if I'm lying, I'm gonna say, well, what are you apologizing for? We don't apologize if it's untrue or if you have strong reason to believe it isn't. In that case, again, uh, okay, I saw, I've seen your comment here. I'd like to learn more. Can you call me at my office? But don't apologize if you have nothing to apologize for. They love that. It will make them bold, and we don't want that. I'm just going to do a time check. Okay. Uh, repairing, we talked about repairing your footprint. I showed you how I fixed my or changed mine. And that's going back to where my old government days have now been pushed down. The new mat is now at the top in terms of Google and image search results. My social media comes out high. Um, <clears throat> if you've got unwise posts or silly things that you wish weren't a part of your online identity, delete them and just start packing or, or stacking the positive good stuff over top. Number one, they'll be off your accounts. Yes, they could technically be found, but much harder. Number two, the positive stuff will start pushing anything deeper and deeper down, harder to find. That's the best way to do it. Okay. Now, we've talked a lot about building our image, fixing it, monitoring it. Um, we've talked about dealing with some of the nicer and less nicer elements that can be found online, trolls, uh, po positive and negative reviews. This final stretch is gonna be about protecting your identity. And I'm gonna tell you a story, um, a quick story. Um, I never took cybersecurity seriously at all. Um, I just thought I was above it. Who would target me? I'm not rich, I'm not famous, whatever. Uh, back in the beginning, it would have been probably fall of 2017. I really just started doing what I do now. Um, 
at any rate, I, I, I did some um, TV media um, for CBS in the States. And I went out to get a nice meal to make to celebrate. And I can remember being in a dark, it was a dark, rainy, cold day. I was in a parking lot in my car. And someone sent me a link uh, on Facebook and it said, Matt, is this you? And it was a YouTube link. And I thought, oh, they must have published my interview on another affiliate. Cool. And I didn't even think about it. I clicked it. See, my ego got me. And it opened and I remembered, oh, wait, there was a warning about a weird malicious link, blah, blah, blah. So I closed it. But I, I, I thought that was open. So I sat in that parking lot and I changed the passwords for all of my social media. So Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, my Twitter, my online banking, my email, everything in that parking lot on a phone. It was no fun. That took a while. And I also set up two-factor or multi-factor authentication. So that means if Brianna went to log into my Facebook, even if she had my correct password, she would need, also need the PIN code that gets texted to my device. And without that PIN code, she gets, doesn't get in. So that night, watching TV, and I got an email. Somebody tried to access your account. If it wasn't you, you don't need to respond. They couldn't get in. And I looked at my phone. Sure enough, there was a, a PIN code that had been texted to me. Somebody had my password, but they didn't have the PIN. Now, why is that so important? Well, there's many reasons. You could get ripped off, but I think even worse. If somebody got your Facebook or your Instagram, or your LinkedIn, or access to your blog or your website for even 10 minutes, how much damage could they do to your reputation? They could post racist things, inflammatory, um, unflattering things, vulgar or provocative things. And if they do that, the onus is on you to prove it wasn't you. And that's not really possible. If somebody went in and did it under your account, how do you prove that it wasn't you? So in other words, um, that could do a lot of damage to a reputation, which may not be repairable or would take a lot of time to repair. Um, and our reputation and trust is a currency in the small business community. And if our trust and our reputations get damaged, uh, it can be very expensive and damaging all around. So the, uh, it's very, very, very important that we're taking strong, uh, practical but strong measures to protect, it's really our online identities out there. A couple things I'll show you that I do. I'm just gonna jump along. Uh, that's a quick example of what happens when your passwords get breached, by the way. This is a dark net search results. I know how to search for this stuff. And this is a government agency, a provincial one. And in the list here were email addresses, their passwords, and over here is their hashed passwords. That's a bit geeky, I won't get into explaining that. But their email addresses and passwords are here for sale. They sell them on the dark net for X amount of Bitcoin. They'll give you Matt's LinkedIn or they'll give you 350 breached email addresses. They'll sell credit card numbers, all of that. I know that this was a legitimate result because I was one of these provincial employees at one point. And my, my email address was right here. And the password I used back then was here and it was the one I was using. So passwords are super important. Couple of things we never want to do. Um, number one, reusing passwords. Mark Zuckerberg's password, the CEO and founder of Facebook was da da da. So that's a weak password, that's bad enough. Um, but he's using the same one on everything. So when they breached his password for his like Facebook account, they could get into his banking and everything. So we don't want to reuse passwords. And there's a good reason why right there. Because if my password got breached and it was here, these people will take that password and they will go and they will do another search for that password and they'll find your other email accounts that you're using the same one on, your um, social media, all that stuff. So if they get into one, don't, don't, let them, don't let it so they can get into everything. I, I know what you're saying, how do you remember all the passwords? I'll get to that before we're done. There's, a, there's an answer. Um, strong passwords. Though most of the time that people get hacked, Sometimes it is a malicious link and it's viruses or Trojans or any number of things. More often than not, it's called social engineering and they will look up Matt and they will see, I graduated Loyals College, the year I graduated, actually that's not the year I graduated, but you get the idea. Uh, my, my son's name is Pierce and he's 10, so he's born in 2010. They'll maybe try my middle initial. If I'm into gaming, they'll try things like Fortnite King, Fortnite player, different handles. And that's most of the time how they get in. That's most of the time they, they actually guess their passwords. Um, and there's also software 
where they can plug in an email, for example, into it, and it will automatically go through and start guessing passwords. Um, some passwords can be cracked in seconds, some could be days by computers. So the name of the game is strong passwords and not reusing them and never share them. See this one here or this one? Those aren't gonna get guessed. No, they're not easy to remember, but you don't have to. I'll show you in a second why, and that'll be the last thing we cover. The, again, these are websites. So I'm not going to go into all of these online live because we're getting short on time, but they're in the, they'll be in the PDF. It's just a website. If you go in and punch in your email into this one here, have I been pawned? In my case, it came back with three breaches. Adobe, LinkedIn, and this was some, I forget, website. Canva is one that frequently gets, uh, has been associated with breaches too. Um, so, like, what did I learn there? I learned, well, okay, I had no idea I had been breached. There's actually five now when I look at my Hotmail. Uh, one thing you can do, I do it myself, is I have an email address that I use to sign up for things. So when I registered for LinkedIn or uh, Canva, um, I use a dummy email that I don't use for anything real. I use it for accounts. Any spam goes to that. It's not my personal or my work one. Um, and if I'm ever breached, the, the hackers don't get my real email. They just get my one I use to register for stuff. That can fix that. That's the website for it right there. This is a cool one too. Free, again, it's just a website. This will allow you to test a password before you use it. So I can put in, how secure is my password? This is what you'll see. And if I put in a weak one, password one, two, three, it'll come back and it'll say it's weak. You should not use that. And it'll say tips for making it stronger. It's too short. Avoid common words or phrases and use symbols. There's no symbols in it. Or it tells you right here how to make it a better password. So if you're thinking about new passwords, you want to try it out. This is a highly trusted LastPass um, uh, cybersecurity company. And this is the final stretch, folks. Um, LastPass is a password manager tool. It's the one I use. A colleague or a contact of mine that works for Google recommended it. I saw she did a post on LinkedIn about LastPass and password managers. I looked at it, liked it, sent her a note, and I said, is this one you use? Yeah, we all use it here. So I thought, okay, good enough for me. Um, it's really easy. It's a Chrome browser extension, and you can also put it on here as an app. I have it as an app and an extension. And once you get in there, you'll get what's called your vault. And on here, you can see I've got my email, my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter, and it's all secured in this vault. And the only way to get in here, the only weak link is you need a strong universal password to get in. And it's not one that you can, you can't make it easy and you can't forget it because it's not, I don't even think you can get in if you lose your vault. So what I've done is low tech, I've written my password down on a couple of sticky notes in my house. I got one on my desk, one in my sock drawer, and I got another one somewhere else. Uh, I'm not worried about my wife finding it. I'm not worried about my kids seeing it. Um, I don't store my, my vault password on my phone because my phone can be accessed. It's online by billions of people. I'm not too worried about my kids or my wife running into my password. So I just wrote it down and tucked it away. Um, anyway, once you get in there, you just add your accounts. Once you do, I've added, let's say I've added my Instagram and I'll click and I'll go and I'll say generate password. It's just like a menu that drops down. And it auto generates your password. Then I can click here, copy it, or you click down here, copy it. Then I go into my Instagram. I save this here first. So it's in my vault, the password's in my vault. Go into Instagram and I update my password and save it. I've got one of these really hard, almost unguessable or crackable passwords and I don't remember it. Because if I need it in my Instagram account teaching at the college, I actually have to log in each time I do it there. I will open my vault on my phone and go to my vault and there's my password. I don't have to remember it. You don't have to do your password every time, by the way. It's like it is now. It's if you don't have your password saving when you're using your device, or if you're going to use a new computer or phone to access your accounts, you would need to enter your password only then. But if you do two-factor authentication and you don't recycle your passwords and you get nice strong ones like this, you can sleep while knowing your image, your online identity are pretty darn secure. It's very unlikely you would have any issue. And it'll let you do a secure, I'm gonna jump past this just because I've got it all on screens for you. You can see here, actually my initial those calls password is very weak. Yet my other ones are really strong. 
those are the ones I used last pass to create. And I've got a few links there for you, but at the end, I'm going to leave that up. Uh, that is my contact info. So my LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, my website, my email. Any questions, um, any follow-up, feel free to reach out. All else fills, Brianna knows how to reach me. Brianna, I'll, I'll hand it back over to you. And Are you there, Matt? You look frozen. Matt? Well, um, I just want to say thank you everyone for coming out today. I guess not coming out, um, joining us online today. Um, if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to um, reach out. Um, I will send everyone um, it will either be later today or early tomorrow. I'll send you the recording and all the good stuff that Matt's going to send to me, um, as well as his contact information. So if you have any questions at all, uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to him or reach out to me if you have any questions for me. Um, I just said, someone say, that was great. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Well, thank, uh, thank you, Brianna. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, um, everyone who joined us today. Um, I hope you got a lot out of it. We covered a lot in a little bit of time. Um, so please, um, if it hasn't processed, that's normal. Um, you, uh, you'll have everything you need to practice. Um, you, you don't have to have memorized everything because it's going to be in that, that document for you. And if you do have questions, again, I've got your back. So I, I hope you enjoyed it today. I hope you realize what's achievable, what can be done. Um, you, that you can see that this in fact can and will work for you and help you create a better brand, reach more people. Uh, that's the goal today. The skills will come with a little bit of practice and referring to the document. I'd say have fun with it. It is really fun. It's really interesting. All else fails you got me if you have, if you have questions. I think I saw another question pop up there, Brianna. Thank you very much, Trevor. Um, all right, well, if, if that's it for now, um, thanks again. Uh, again, I invite you to be in contact if there's anything I can do. Um, Brianna, Trevor, everybody who made this happen today, I really appreciate, always will, the opportunity to come, and I know you're gonna have a great week with some great events, so I'll, I'll, be, I'll be staying tuned, and um, everybody, have a great day. Thanks, Matt. Take care, Thank everyone. You.